Hello, good people. It's Rob Lee. We're going to talk about overcoming fear, depression, and anxiety in these days. And this is something that's very, very hard. Freedom and truth are a way of life. They are not mere words. Depending on the person, though, they can have entirely different meanings. Depending on who you are, the life that you live, what, what you believe. Everything in this message, I've lived it. I do not say things that I do not understand. I simply do not do that to you. I would, I'm not going to do that to my father. I would never do that to Jesus, to, to Jesus Christ. I'm not a churchgoer. I don't preach on the corners. I don't. I have the truth that I believe. It's in me. I'll hold on to it. I'll fight for it. But what I'm going to share with you in this video is for the believer, the non-believer, the people that are scared, confused, they don't know. I'm going to share with you the truth and it can set you free if you really want to be free. Because many people talk of freedom. They want to be free of their depression, their, their worries, their fears, their anxieties. But when worse comes to worse, when push comes to push, they will run back to those fears and that spiritual prison and even that physical prison if it means they may have to change because people are afraid of change. I share with you the truth from my heart and spirit to yours. I have not one ounce of power to make you accept the truth and you are going to hear in this message the truth. However, if you watch the message in its entirety, brethren, you will and can have a very different perspective about your life and conquering your fears and your pains, whether they be mental or physical. I cannot promise you, because I'm not a con man, I can't make you promises. I do not tell you that I can solve all your problems because I have no power to solve not one of your problems, but I can help you if, if you will listen. I don't have the answers, but who loves me does have all the answers. I do tell you that I have a few of the answers, but I take no, no credit for, for them from myself because they were given to me. Because I have lived and learned and suffered and was shown the truth, I know these answers. The truth I speak of has changed my life and it can change your life. I'm not a self-help guru. I am a child of the Almighty Father. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. And if that offends you, you should go now. This message is for the young, the old, the sick, the lonely, the scared, the angry, and those who are mocked and shunned by a corrupt society. This message is for the poor and the needy and those, and those who are always told how bad they are when they've done nothing to nobody. This message is for those who are hurting now, for those who suffer. For those who are in a mental and they're in a mental and spiritual prison, I want to help you to break free. But these people cannot break free of this mental hell that has engulfed in. This message is for you. This message is for those who are living in fear, doubt, fear, and depression. This message is for those who have lost themselves and cannot find the truth. This message is for those who have lost loved ones friends, pets, and more, and cannot make sense of the hell that we sometimes endure in this life. This message is for the man, the woman, the young, the old, the believer, the non-believer, black, white, green, tan, red, yellow, I don't care. I do the work of the Father. And when he told me to do his work, he did not tell me, hey, I only want you to go to the white people. Jesus Christ said he would in no way cast out anybody that comes to him. I follow him. This message is for any person on this earth who truly wants to change and remove the shackles they live in. This video is for the individual and families who have lost homes, cars, jobs, and more because the Babylonian beast system got the best of you. This message is for those who want to help someone else to understand they do have an option to cope and even succeed in this life. This message is for the young that have lost their lives to the Babylonian beast system. You, you will awaken again. You, you will. And maybe through this message, somebody else can share this message with somebody young or somebody old, and it will save them. But yet, it does not come from me. I'm nobody. Absolutely nobody. I'm a messenger. That's it. My hope is that you will see and learn the truth as it was shown to me. Now, if you open up your mind, and take a chance to learn something new, you will remove your shackles and be truly free. You will, you will prepare for the future and meet it head on. 
most people in this world, especially in Western culture countries, know what it means to be scared, especially in the past couple decades. They know what it means to be afraid, depressed, and to feel like there's just, there's just no hope because they have become engulfed by entertainment. They have become engulfed in technology that does nothing but scare the hell out of them. And quite frankly, life is hard. When there's an evil force that's always out against you, life is hard. Throughout history, people have been seeking answers to the mysteries of this world and their lives from the very beginning. I mean, from the very beginning, people are always wanting answers about God, life, what's the meaning to it, how, how do you live it right? They, they seek the answers in all the wrong places, yet the truth, and fr the truth and freedom that comes from it is right in front of them. You do not need pills. You do not need doctors, cons, and false motivation. They only make your problems worse. What you're suffering from, fear, depression, and anxiety, it can be conquered. The modern psychotropic drugs, the psychiatrists, the psychologists, and all of your self-help gurus, as well as the so-called pastors and churches folks, they are illusionist. Now, an illusion is a deceptive appearance or impression. Now, since these people are deceptive, th this means they always lie. An illusionist either adds or subtracts in order to change what something is to make it appear to be something that it's not. He creates images that tell a lie, and thus he lies. That's why people never get better when they go to psychiatrists and self-help gurus. They don't get better, or they'll get better for a couple weeks or a month. Then they fall back, and they're worse than where they were because they never received the truth. These monsters, especially in Big Pharma, and Jesus Christ said that the potions that we receive today, this comes from the word pharmakia. This is where we get the word pharmacy. They have destroyed, Jesus said, they have destroyed my people through potions. These monsters have to create the illusion they want people to be healed when in reality they desire the people to grow worse. They want the press to keep seeking them for help and they want you to, to feel like that there's no other source to solve and heal you of your fears, anxiety, and depression. They want you to become chemically dependent on them and spiritually dependent on nothing. There is only one source of freedom. People, if you have a mental and physical oppression, there's only one source to set you free. One. Have you noticed today that even the primary care doctors have started prescribing mind-altering drugs. Now, these deadly poisons, what they do, folks, is they act on the central nervous system. They affect your mood, thoughts, and behaviors. Point blank. You're not the same person when you start taking their pills. They destroy your ability to process information and think critically. They make you spiritually dormant, and that's the idea. They want you to be cat catatonic, that you cannot think for yourself. Again, you become chemically dependent on them. You do not go to the true source for, to, to, get, to get your help. They are created. These pills are made by the same monsters who pose as your friends while seeking to destroy you. They want you to be complacent, and more importantly, they want you to be afraid. And yet, all the while, they want you to keep thinking that they are your friends and they're trying to help you. Don't you find it odd, folks, that the United States makes up 5% of the world's population? Yet, the United States consumes 60% of the world's psychotropic drugs. Do you really think this is a coincidence, brethren? Not hardly. The enemy wants you stuck and lost in the maze, but even more sinister is they want you to believe, again, I'm going to say it again, they want you to believe they are the only way out. They are the only avenue of help. The reality is this. They're not helping you. They're only dragging you further and further down. The reality is this. There is only one way out and one way only. It's not in modern 501c3 churches. It's not on liars and cons on YouTube. It's not the Babylonian entertainment industry. It's not the medical industry. It's not Hollywood. It's not CNN. All these do is lock you into hypnotic spells. That's what they're there to do. TV, m movies, music, dope. It's all to lock you into a spell. They want you addicted. Addicted. Not only to the chemical, but to the program. They want you addicted. They do not want you to seek the only option that you have to the truth. You will remain in mental and spiritual prison and you will die in your prison unless you seek and accept the truth and do it today. It's not complicated once you know the truth. However, you cannot 
Listen to me, folks. You cannot keep seeking help and answers from those who have burned down your house and stand holding the matches. Now, if you catch somebody burning down your house and you know, hey, you just tried to kill me and my family, would you run up to them and say, hey, can you give me a pill to make me better? Can I talk to you about my problems? This is what folks do, mostly white people. And people wonder, why are you so hard on white people? I've made it incredibly clear in the past three or four months why I'm so hard on white people. Being as how I am a white man. You must be willing to tear down your old house and build a new one. This time your house will be built on the foundation of truth. And you will endure and overcome all obstacles and you will conquer your fears, depression, and anxiety. And most of you can and will have in the pinnacle of this life. There's only one pinnacle, man. It's to have a real relationship with your creator. I mean, when you can have a real re a real relationship with the one who created everything, when you can go to him and say, Father, and he calls you son or daughter, you're there. And when he can say, now I want you to follow my son who came before you, Jesus, and when you will have a real relationship with him and you will know that everything that you ask him, he hears you. And most of the time, he's going to tell you, I'm going to see to it that you get it now I'm going to help you however it's not that easy because most folks don't make it that easy I ask you will you taste and see that the father is good yet I tell you again I'm not here to give you all the answers I have no such ability I can implore you to give it a chance you have everything to gain by simply giving the only true source a chance however the true source is not your slot machine you're not going to put a quarter in. You're not going to say he owes you something because he owes you nothing. However, if you will come, if you will come to him with a true heart, a true heart and talk to him. I want you to think about something, folks, a man or a woman. And you see the commercials. You see the commercials of a woman. She's sitting down with a doctor and she's given this woman all her life story. And then there's a. At the end of the commercial, it's about this pill that's going to make this woman better. And then the at the small print, it says, but this can do this to you. It can kill you. It can make you this. It can make you that. And then at the end of the video, you see the woman. She's feeling better, and she's, she's with her family. It's bogus. It's a lie. It's a lie. There's only one way out. One way. Have you ever considered, brethren, how a five-year-old child, seven-year-old child, doesn't matter, boy or girl, they can come home from a day of school. They just got bullied they just had a hard day they fell at school they come home and they run to their daddy and they're scared and they're crying and they come to their daddy and daddy picks them up and they tell their daddy all about it listen to me the little boy he's his his nose is running his eyes he's crying he's hurt he's got a he's, he's got a big spot on his leg he goes and tells his daddy all about it once he tells his daddy about it the child has so much faith in his daddy he, he knows the problem's solved. He goes on about his life now. He's not crying. He's not hurting. The spot on his leg's done. He's back out playing because he knows, I just told my daddy about it. Daddy's going to solve it. Daddy loves me. Daddy's going to take care of it for me. People will not do the same with God Almighty through Jesus Christ. Why do you think it is? Because they don't really believe, and the truth is they don't really care. But they will continue to live in their spiritual and mental and physical prisons until the day they die. It's amazing to me, brethren, that many will scoff, laugh, mock, and say, there is no God. Or there's many gods. Or they say there's no creator, there's no father, or that all religions are all the same. They're just, they're just, there's just one path to it all, that the God of the Bible, our Bible, our father, He's no more relevant than any other beliefs around the world. He's no different than Muhammad, Krishna, Kali, Shiva, all these. This is what they will say, that Allah is just the same as Jesus. No, this is what they tell you. But yet I ask you, if that's the case then, brethren, I ask you one question. Why is there a nonstop war and propaganda campaign against Jesus? If he's not real, or he has so little power as they like to tell us, then why? Why is there a nonstop war to d deny and hate Jesus Christ? I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to go deep and tell you why. And I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to show you how you can escape. 
The reason they hate him is because Jesus Christ is the truth. He is freedom. There is no war on any of the false gods. Only Jesus. You see, Jesus Christ, a real relationship with Jesus Christ, can truly free you from your fears, your depression, and your anxiety, and so much more. He will set you free. But it has to be real. You cannot base it on BS. Because it ain't taking a pill. It's real. It ain't talking to a Babylonian doctor. It's real. Let me ask you something. With everything that you've gone through, as hard as life has been, if you had a best friend and this best friend came to you, if this best friend came to you and said, whatever your name is, look, I know everything that you're going through. Everything. I see your tears. I see your anger. I see all the hard heartache and hell that you're going through. But listen, look at me. I can make all this better for you. I will help you. I will be your best friend. I will make all this better for you. What would you say to that person if you looked at this person and you knew this person is being for real? What if this person said, look, you may wonder, is this real? Can I really do this? Simply give me a try. Give me a try. Would you not give him or her a try? People will give dope a try. They'll give the Babylonian psychiatrist a try. They'll give Hollywood a try. They'll give their best friend a try. But they will not give God Almighty and his son Jesus Christ a try. So here's a best friend who comes to you and says, look, let me show you. Now, I know you've been going through a hard time. I know you're hurting. I know you're struggling. I know everything. I will be your best friend. You will be my best friend. I will love you and you will love me and we will get this right. But you got to trust me. You got to love me. You got to believe in me. And then I'm going to want you to shut up. And I'm going to give you some work to do and I want you to shut up and do it. And listen, you got to love me even more than your mama, your daddy, your son, your spouse, your brother, your friend, your uncle, your cousin. All of them got to come second to me. Because it's about me and you forever. It's me and you until death. It's me and you in the next life. I am all that. So, how many people, if this best friend come to him and said, look, I'm going to help you. We're going to change your life. How many people would say, I'll take it. Because life is hard, man. I need some help. So, this best friend. His name is Jesus. How much power does Jesus have? I mean, really, people can talk about the name Jesus and people will use the name, but how much power does Jesus Christ really have? Let me read something to you. I just want you to think about something. So we're talking about this best friend with all this power. How much power does Jesus Christ really have? How much power does Jesus Christ really have? And people will say again, the Bible's not this. We can't believe it. It doesn't matter what they say. It's, it matters what you say. Because I'm simply asking you to give it to taste and see that God is good. Now you can't taste for a second. You've got to go all in. You got to go all in and nobody's forcing you. And once you get in, if you decide to leave, hey man, leave. But you owe it to yourself. And more importantly, you owe it to him to say, I need to try. Once in my life, I need to really say, let me give every single bit of it to him. One time. If you'll do it one time, brethren, all of it, you'll never leave. You'll understand the truth. Doesn't mean that life's going to be perfect. But it will sure as hell be a whole lot better than it is now. So how much power does Jesus Christ have? You know, people want to say the Bible is not true. The Bible has been changed. And we don't have the right Bible. And how do we know what the Word of God is? And I've seen so many people, asking liars, white, black, Jew, uh, Muslim, all of them. The Bible's not right. There's 200 Bibles. And they're right. There is 200 Bibles. There's only one Bible. There's only one Word of God. It's the 1611 King James Bible. And let me just give this to you again before we get into the power of this best friend. Are you mean to tell me that God is so small, so small, so, so little, that he can't preserve his word, right? 
that people can save coins, paintings. They can save ancient, ancient relics from millennia. Centuries, man. Centuries, even thousands of years ago. Mere men and women can do this. But Almighty God cannot preserve His Word in any way that He chooses? Are you kidding me? What, what type of asinine fool believes this? I'll tell you who. The same people that do not want you to be free, they are the ones that promote that because they don't want you to be free. Remember, they want you chemically and spiritually and physically dependent on them, not on the truth. So this best friend who's come to you and said, look, we're going to make some life changes, you and me together. How much power does this best friend have? First Peter 3.22, in that book that so many people say is not real, but I know that it is real because I've lived it. First Peter 3.22, who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God. Angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Talking about Jesus. Where is Jesus? He's at the right hand of God. Angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Everything is in subject unto him. That's just one. We're going to read a few more. But I'm not going to read them all to you because it's just too many. Revelation 17, 14. These talking about the ones I just talked about, the liars, the cons, the doctors, and all these people that want you to be in their, in their prison. These will make war with the Lamb. The Lamb is Jesus, and the Lamb shall overcome them. Why? For he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him, you, if you choose to be, and they that are with him are called chosen and faithful. So now your best friend is, is not only in the, in the first part, first Peter we read, your best friend has got everything is in subject to him. In Revelation 17, 14, we read that your best friend is a king. He sits at the right hand of God. So everything is in subject to your best friend. Everything bows to him. He's got it all. He is a king. He sits at the right hand of God. And if you are with him, you are called chosen and faithful. Your enemy will make war against him and they will lose. Well, that's a pretty impressive best friend, is it not? But that's not even enough. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthen, strengtheneth me. So now your best friend, your king, says, who sits at the right hand of God, is saying, listen to me. You can do anything through me. Through me. You see, your Babylonian doctor and your pills and your Hollywood and your YouTube liars and the social media, they can't tell you that because they don't have no power to do it. But Jesus Christ does. And he's saying, listen, best friend, you can do all things through me and I will strengthen with you. Philippians 2, 9 through 10. Verse 9. Wherefore God, talking about the Father, has also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. So now your best friend is saying, hey, you want to know something? Even my name has power. Simply saying my name has power. Verse 10, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Whew! Let me tell you now. So Jesus Christ is saying, my name alone can shake the heavens, can shake the earth. And in the Bible, don't you know that the devils ran in fear from just the name Jesus when Jesus would speak? Jesus says, everything in heaven is going to bow. Everything on earth is going to bow to me. And this is your best friend. Remember, he's your best friend. He came to you and said, listen, I'm going to help you. I'm going to break you free of this if you really want to be free. Well, let's finish. Matthew 28, 18, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Let me say it again. Here's your best friend. He's a king. He sits at the right hand of God. His name alone can shake the earth. Everything bows to him. Everything is in subjection to him. And now he comes and tells you, Hey, best friend, every single bit of power in heaven and in earth belongs to me. That's your best friend. Let me ask you, man. How much? Should you worry? How much should you fret? How much anxiety should you have? How much fear should you have if you really believe it? If you really believe that he loves you and you love him, how much should you worry? Seems a little disrespectful to your best friend if you leave knowing all that with him and you said, I need you. Even if you broke down crying to him, fell on your face and said, please help me. Do you think if he loved you any, he would refuse you because he said, I will in no way cast out anybody that comes to me. 
So all power has been given unto your best friend. Let's review it again, brethren. Your best friend is the king. Your best friend has all power. Your best friend sits at the right hand of Almighty God. Your best friend said that everything in heaven and in earth will bow down to me. Everything in heaven and in earth is in subjection to me. Your best friend says you can call on me 24-7 and I will be there for you always. I will never reject you. I will love you better and more than anybody on this earth ever could. Because my love is perfect. Because I'm the only thing that is perfect. And he says, just my name alone, if you really believe in me and love me, just my name alone is enough. Now I'm asking you, I'm asking you, do you need anything else? But he's not, he's not done. He's, and then he promised you, he says that through me, he says, you can do anything, anything. But notice what he says at the very end, almost at the very end of the book. We go to Revelation 21.8, and he says, Do not fear them. Do not fear this life, or you will not reign with me. Because, see, it's disrespectful to have your best friend say, This is, I, I've got it all. What the hell are you going to be afraid of? It's disrespectful to him, if you really believe it. Revelation 21.8 says, But the fearful, notice the first words out of his mouth. Now, he's going to go on to list, the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. But notice the first words out of the mouth of your best friend, Jesus, the king, but the fearful, and the unbelieving, but the first is the fearful. So you can take your fears, you can take your worries, you can take your anxiety, you can take all that and you can write it on a piece of paper and you walk yourself outside and you take a match or a lighter and you burn it up. You burn it up before God Almighty and say, no more, no more. And you pray to Jesus Christ and tell him that some lowly man preached some sermon today and you would like to partake of it. And if you will be patient, and if you will come to him and talk to him with a true heart, your life will change. Now, you must be willing to believe in him and have faith, because he don't like BSers. He don't like cons. He just told you, I've got it all. But he may want you to do some work. He may, may, want, he may want to see, how is my new best friend, how are they going to do by me? But if you will be quiet, if you will shut up, your life will start to change. These fears, these phobias will go away. You will start to be what the Bible calls a new creature. Guess what? You will be born again. Are you getting it? Born again. And how did all this happen? How did it happen? Through Jesus. You see, because your Almighty Father, listen to me, did not give you a spirit of cowardice, of phobias. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Verse 7, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God has given that to you if you want it. And how did he say that you can have it? Through his son, Jesus, which has got it all. Remember, he's a king. He sits at the right hand of God. Everything is in subjection to him. His name alone can shake the earth and heavens. He has all power in everything. And he says... That through him you can do anything. Now I'm asking you, what do you need? You don't need nothing but Jesus Christ. That's all that you need. And don't you ever forget it and don't you let anybody take it from me. If you need to talk to me, if I can help you in any way, I don't have all the answers. I'm just a lowly servant of the Almighty Father, and I'm telling you right now, Jesus Christ is my best friend. That's how I broke free was by real faith. Not a little bit, but all of it. You email me, and I'll do the best I can. Here's my website, flockofjesus.com. I'm waiting to build on to it even more. It's already done. But, again, take all your fears, your phobias, your anxieties, your worries, and your doubts, and burn them up. Because if you really want to get rid of them, it is there for you to get rid of it. May the Almighty Father, the one true God, the one that they doubt, they shun, they don't believe in, 
May he bless you, may he love you, and may he put his hands on you. And when he does, you want to know what he's going to tell you? Follow my son Jesus, and he will be your best friend. And guess what? This best friend has got it all. There ain't nothing that this best friend can't do. And in return, you must love him unconditionally above everybody. Jesus, your best friend, must come before everybody and everything on this earth. It, he has to be number one or he's not going to be your best friend. Number one. But guess what? He's going to make you number one to him because he's perfect. May the Father bless each and every one of you in the name of Jesus. Amen.